All right, so um, welcome to the third topic on work, energy, and power. This is all about kinetic energy, and this is really going to follow closely with what we learned about last time with potential energy. So um, again, I'm sure you probably learned a little bit about kinetic energy. This idea, kinetic, really means motion. So kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and you can imagine that anything that's moving uh, has energy because it could do work. So uh, if you had a cannonball sailing at you, um, that cannonball, if it were to hit you, could do all kinds of terrible work to you. Um, and the amount of work it could do would depend really on two main factors, which you could probably imagine what they are. Um, really quickly though, just a reminder that kinetic energy, just like potential energy, just like work, all these things, these are all scalar values. So even though we're gonna start talking about the motion of an object, it doesn't really matter which way it's going, the direction of the object doesn't matter. Whether that cannonball is heading at you 50 meters per second north or 50 meters per second south doesn't really matter it's still got the same amount of energy so the 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 direction doesn't matter just the magnitude and of course like all other forms of energy it's measured in joules so as i mentioned uh kinetic energy really depends on two factors ek is going to equal one half mv squared where m of course is the mass of the object and v is the speed not the velocity because again direction doesn't matter this is worth pointing out here, just really quickly, that just take a little notice here, that it's one half times mass times velocity squared. The fact that that velocity is squared, what that tells us is that while mass matters, speed matters more. So two objects, one that's small but traveling really quickly, might actually have much more kinetic energy than a larger object that's traveling more slowly. Okay. So let's look at a couple of examples here. Uh, we've got an, a student running at a uniform speed of 5.7 meters per second. What's their kinetic energy? So since EK is equal to 1 half mv squared, 1 half times 60 times 5.7 squared, this is going to give us right around 975 joules of energy. All right, another example here. So a, what's the kinetic energy? Oh, pardon me. The kinetic energy of a 2.1 kilogram rotten tomato. That's a big, that's a big tomato. Uh, anyways, it's got a lot of kinetic energy. It's got a thousand joules of kinetic energy. How fast must it be moving? Well, EK equals one half MV squared. Now, I'm not going to step through the algebra on this. I'm going to like leave that up to you. But what you should get to when you solve for V, V is going to end up equaling the square root of 2 times ek divided by m and note that the square root is over this entire thing so it's the square root of 2 times 1000 divided by a mass which is 2.1 and this ends up being right around 31 meters per second so that's a pretty impressive rotten tomato throw all right, we're just going to look at actually uh, just one more thing here when it comes to kinetic energy. And that's um, how we're going to connect kinetic energy to work. And this is connected by something called the work energy theorem. So if you think about it, if an object has a net force acting on it, if there's some unbalanced force acting on it, it must be accelerating. And um, if an object is accelerating, as it accelerates, it must be gaining kinetic energy. And so this, this net force must somehow be related to its uh, gain of kinetic energy. So um, the way we work it out is by looking at our um, example for work. Remember, we said work was just a change in energy. And while when we talked about work, we said, well, you usually don't want to use net force because that's not going to give you the total work. Uh, acting on the object. If all you're interested in, however, if all you care about is the change in kinetic energy, then you can do force times distance, and in this case, you do use the net force. So if all you want is the change in kinetic energy, then it's net force times distance. I'm just going to write a little reminder down here that if the work you're interested in is the total work, so you want to know the total change in energy, then you're probably actually going to use the applied force times the distance. Okay, so let's do another example. A sprinter exerts a net force of 260 newtons over a distance of 35 meters. What is his change in kinetic energy? So change in EK is just going to equal F net times D. So 260 newtons times 35 gives us uh, about 9100 joules of kinetic energy. 
And here we've got a student pushing a crate, 25 kilogram crate with initially at rest with a force of 160 newtons. Well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, let's draw a free body diagram. Of course we're gonna do that. And so we've got a force of gravity here. We've got a normal force there. Uh, we've got uh, an applied force over this way of 160. And I've got a friction force back that way. of uh, 75. So how fast will it be traveling? Um, let's see, how fast will it be traveling after we push it for 15 meters? Well, uh, we know that a change in kinetic energy is equal to F net times D. And a change in kinetic energy is just equal to 1 half M delta V squared. So um, notice that if we have a change in kinetic energy, the mass of the object's not changing. So I can put the delta here just right beside the V because really what's gonna change is the speed. It's gonna speed up or it's gonna slow down. Now solving this for, um, for V, I'm gonna get the square root of two F net times D all divided by M. Now it's worth pointing out here that um, we've got a, we start off at rest. So the change in velocity is normally V final minus V initial, but notice that V initial is zero. So in this case, the change in velocity is the final velocity, or the final speed, I should say. And that's what we're looking for is the final speed. So subbing in all our values here, we get the square root of two times 160 minus 75 is 85 times a distance of 15 meters divided by a mass of 25 kilograms. And so our final speed is gonna be 10 meters per second. All right, that's it for uh, kinetic energy.